we're real happy here. And I think as a result, when you bring a recruit in, they get the feeling this is a happy place to be. People like it here. They're comfortable here. They want to stay here year-round. So many of our kids stayed here last summer and either played in that league or went to summer school or, or did both. Uh, and so we think it's going to be a good year. We are now prohibited, as most of you know, we can no longer even talk about the recruit or prospective recruits individually, whereas a year ago we had a little more flexibility. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, last year I didn't know how, how important that rule was until towards the end of the year. And, you know, after I got my confidence up, I thought it was a, you know, a fairly easy shot. And, you know, this summer I worked really hard on it. And you know, this fall I kept working on it. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to shoot the three point a lot more and uh, with a little more consistency, consistency than I did last year. How is uh, being picked so high in the season ranking helping or hurting the team? I don't know. I mean, you know, we're picked really high in a lot of polls, but then you look at the rest of the conference and, you know, there's always three or four teams ahead or right there with us. So, you know, really it's like saying we're picked, you know, third or fourth in the conference, which isn't as great as it, you know, seems to be an eighth in the country. But, um, you know, if we go out there, we just got to work really hard and, uh, you know, hopefully we'll get a couple breaks. And if we work hard enough, we'll make our own breaks. But, uh, you know, it's going to be a tough conference. So, you know, right now, you know, we're picked the third and fourth in the, in the conference, but, you know, eighth in the country. So it's sort of a little misleading. Talk about the chemistry of this team this year. As good as last season. Yeah, I, I think so because we do have we have six seniors now, and that's most seniors that you know Iowa's probably ever had. And uh, you know, since I've been here, we've had a lot of you know underclassmen carrying the team. And hopefully this year, there'll be a lot of sen juniors and seniors carrying the squad. What about the rest of the Big Ten? Iowa, of course, lost a lot, but of course, the national champions lost to Alfred now. What do you think it's going to take for Iowa to overcome its loss to the Low House Gamble? Well, I mean, obviously, we need two or three guys from the senior class to step forward and. Uh, you know, take the position of leadership that those two had last year, and uh, you know most importantly, this it can boil down to uh, you know hard work and if we get the breaks because like last year, you know we could have very easily lost three or four more games in the Big Ten, like the game in Illinois. You know we, we got a lot of breaks, and uh, hopefully we'll get some breaks next year. Last year you were kind of a designated team cheerleader out there, really actually. Mom, are you going to do more of the same, even up that a little bit? I don't know. I mean, it's really not like I go out there and try and do it. I mean, my emotions sort of take over. And uh, you know, I'll just go out there. I'm just going to play my game. And you know, that's cheering people on. It's cheering people on. If it's you know, shooting three-pointers, I'll shoot the three-pointer. OK, thank you. Well, basically what I've been doing is really trying to mature mentally. I think a lot of how I play this year have a lot to do with how much I mature and learn from the mistakes that I made last year, not just physically, but some of the decisions I made when I had the ball and when I didn't have it. And I think I've increased my ability to make the right decision with the ball and without it on offense or defense and just be more aggressive on offense and come out and press the issue and make a guy have to defend me or come out and make a guy have to put on his best move to check me and keep my guy running when he's checking me and just a lot of things that I think I've improved in just by watching old films and just, you know, like I say, getting older and maturing. Coach said you really improved, especially in the last couple of weeks of the season. Are those the games you've been really concentrating on when you seen the play? Uh, well, I watched a little bit of that, but I kind of like not to, I don't really like to watch games where I play too well because I think I started watching the good things and all the moves and get, you know, turn into a fan more than, you know, watching the things that I didn't do right. So I try to watch a game where maybe we lost or I didn't play as well as I should have and just try to critique my game from there. What about the chemistry of this team? It seems like it's a real team and that everyone didn't go home over the summer. They stayed together. Talk about that. Yeah, I think uh, Coach sat down and talked with us and told us that, you know, it might be wise to go home if you really missed home, get home and, you know, just see your family and things like that. But I think a lot of the guys, we kind of like took it on our own to really stick around and help out with the freshmen and go to summer school and just do something that would probably help us later on in life and for our team. And I think it'll pay off this year because we played pretty hard in the summer league and played here every day. So I think it'll, I think it'll pay off. What's been the biggest thing that the team has to work on to overcome the losses? You know, really, I don't know. I think about it all the time, and I don't know what we're going to have to do. I think we're going to have to just do what we normally do when we get our backs against the wall, and that's just whatever happens, happen. You know, just do it by instinct. You know, and the only thing I can think of is that a lot of us will have to put out a lot more bigger numbers than what we did last year. That's including the substitutions and the starters. I think our responsibilities are all increased throughout the season. Start going inside more, like you were mentioning, play more aggressive. Yeah. 
people like Goldenberger were kind of knocking around on defense. You kind of said maybe a payback here that you want to show that you, know, you belong in this league? Yeah, I, I think it'll naturally come. I don't really want to go out and abuse a guy or, you know, hurt anyone, but I, I really feel like the way I play now and what I've learned from Audenberger and Hobson and all those great players that left last year was to really go out and play hard and just do what you know how to do. And, and I think from the maturity and I think just my seniority in the Big Ten is going to help me a lot for the younger guys who are going to have to defend me. Now, you know, I've learned a lot from those guys just by them pushing me around and strong-arming me every game. Good. Okay, no problem. Thanks. All right, nice meeting you. Thank you. You too. I still think I should take them home with me. DJ, first of all, you uh, went on tour this summer. Talk about that and how it helped your basketball game. Uh, yeah, I stayed over in Yugoslavia for a month, and uh, it's really helped me mature as a person and make me appreciate a lot more things that I took for granted here in the United States. And uh, I think playing for another coach and, and seeing how his system develops, uh, you know, you kind of pick and choose the things that you like and you dislike from one coach to another. Talk about this team. How are you going to make up for the loss of Will Hobson? What is this team going to have to do to, you know, have another good season? Someone's just got to step up like Brad and Kevin did and just have a great year. Uh, it's just plain and simple as that. Uh, we've got to continue to show the good work habits that we that we had last year and the willingness to listen to Coach Davis because uh, the guy's proven himself as a winner and uh, we've just got to come ready to work and ready to listen. What did BJ work on over the summer? I've worked uh, on my overall game. Uh, I don't work on one part of my game more than the other. I, I think I'll be much more, much smarter than I was last year, uh, and much better player than I was a year ago. Talk about the chemistry on this team. It seems like you know, everyone could have gone home and gone their separate ways, but everyone seems to stay together this summer. Talk about that. Yeah, well, you know, that kind of carried over from last year. Uh, when we stayed together and we stuck together through thick and thin, and uh, and now we, we know that, that that takes a winner. That makes a winner when you stick together, when times are bad and when times are good. And uh, we just got to continue to have that. And if we're going to be a winner this year. What about the, the attitude about going 30 and 5 last year? They kind of just remember that as the good times and forgetting everything else. Or what is the attitude about last season carrying over into this season? Uh, I don't think it's carrying over at all. Uh, you know, we went 30 and 5 last year, and last year was last year. This is a brand new year. Everyone's bigger, better, and stronger than last year. So. Uh, We've just got to come and we got to regroup, and uh, we've got to be bigger and stronger than we were a year ago. Who do you think Iowa fits into the Big Ten? Well, we'll see. Uh, we certainly think that we have the capabilities to be on the top, but you know we've got to work and we've got to outwork the opponent.
course, he's so valuable because he can play both guard and forward, but this year mostly forward. And there is Bill Jones, and the Hawkeyes are on the board first. A very Jones good last year, Everler knocks it away from Hill, and Hill comes back up with it. Here is Armstrong. And BJ pulls the Hawkeyes back to within two. Armstrong last year, honorable men shoots well, plays great defense. Here's a steal by Hill. Hawkeyes, three and pants two. Hill in deep. Blocking foul call, basketball count. With the foul, Brian McSweet the floor. Almost a steal by Armstrong, and it is as he tips it to Jones. In deep marble. Get it inside quickly. Mo can't buy it. Rebound underneath Jones. Second basket for Bill Jones. A couple of baskets already. Jones last year averaged 3.7 after a sophomore year that he averaged three times that, so he would like to regain. Last year with that Achilles tendon, just bothered him from every position, defensively, offensively, anytime he had to get. Stanford's biggest lead had been six once before. It's six again. Lorenzen from three. And the big guy goes. Back to Hill. Nice execution by Iowa. Good execution. That's the way that was drawn. Hill can have for the Hawkeyes to get the ball inside. You see Iowa playing catch along the perimeter. And now Horton inside. That's what I was looking to do. Get the ball into the. And his shooting has improved immensely since his freshman year. Armstrong limited to one basket thus far. Drives all the way and scores. Armstrong on the 44. Greg Butler. Stanford, not a real physical basketball team, Mac, but they have good size. But like Greg Butler, who would be their biggest player, he is perimeter by his style of game. He likes to go outside. He is not a banger. Hawkeyes just have not gotten that ball inside as much as they need to. When they have, they've been pretty effective. They try to get open underneath. Now they work the ball to Mo. First basket for Jeff Mo. Iowa scored a modest move. Reeves off the pick by Hill. And that is three inside shots in a row for Iowa. So time to provide some rebounding along the tall front line for the Hawkeyes. Moe to the line. You can see Moe, leader returning in three-point percentage. You know, Moe, 0 of 4 from three-point range. Three-point range. Over the top to Hill from Lorenzo. Strong move to the hole by Kent Hill. That's two of those. That Trying to get something going from three. Oh, Hawkeyes got lucky on the break. Reeves for three. Michael Reeves. Fox Jen. Yes, it really does. Horton into the lane. Takes it in. Marble. Jones. Armstrong fighting for the loose basketball. Bow for three. Stanford Cardinal. Miner goes baseline and then throws it away. Here comes a Hawkeye fast break. Taylor trying to challenge Armstrong, but he can't hit it. And BJ hits the layup. Great foul. Six out of six from the Reds. Away. Marble, a big steal. Marble in deep. What a play. I will look at the high percentage shot. Marble on the drive. Where Marble has taken over. He scored the last five points in the game. A bit more than they did yesterday in beating Stanford, 78-75. Lorenzo puts Iowa into the lead to start the ball game. Lorenzo a dozen points yesterday. He's an interesting story, Branch. Went to junior college. In fact, he redshirted one year yeah. in junior college, which is a bit unusual. Has just two years left. He signed with Pittsburgh originally. But when Mr. Charles Smith stayed at Pittsburgh, they released him. He went to Kansas. Hawkeyes are running. Armstrong pulls up. Loses. That was a travel, not called. Jones! The first three Browns still jawing with the referee. Kent Hill, a native of Kansas. So this ball game is certainly an important one to him. And he is 0-1 yesterday, so he has improved that today. <laughs> as a freshman for Kansas, and six already today. Marble in traffic. There were three Jayhawks around him, but... Jewel just inserted in. Lorenzen taken out to try to cool off. Jones 
his high game 10 points twice. He had 17 yesterday. Look at the action underneath as the turnaround by Horton Bank now. And Horton's first pass. I tell you what, neither coach is very pleased with the work thus far. Armstrong gets inside. Good entry pass from 11 already. And Tom Davis talking to B.J. Armstrong about getting back, giving support to that back person on the press. That's Armstrong's restoring Villanova game. Lou Henson's Illini putting on an impressive show with a 23-point victory over Baylor last night. Jones has got nine. And the Hawkeyes have steps. Horton with three points now as he sinks the free throw, 18 in the second half. When Horton makes this, see if Ken Hill goes on the ball. See if he this takes it away. Hill. Good call, Matt McConnell. Fast break. And going high for the tip, Bill Jones. For Bill Jones, really putting it together. A 13 point first half is Hill. And it better be timeout by Bo. Bo. Armstrong trying to go against Miner. Bo for three. Very intensely played first half. Jones, Lorenzo. He'll count and he is fouled by Marshall. Davis has got to be pleased with the first half. The steal and Marble. Jones, Marble, again. Another rebound by Horton. The single most impressive thing to me today, Mac, is Mo shoots another three. Is the way that I was crashing the board. Signed with Pittsburgh before finally landing in Lawrence. Marble. And the penetration in the... So now Jones. Now Armstrong for three. BJ's second basket. He rings another defensive rebound for Lorenzen. The Hawkeyes run. Mo. Mo gets fouled. Pritchard is fouled out. Mo is a chance. Jewel. And now Branch is being pursued by the entire Hawkeye team. Branch is swing at Reeves. The coaches are out there trying to separate them. The nerves have been raw from just about the outset of the ball game. Branch took a swing. That's what precipitated it. Marble and Manning get together. As you said, they were roommates at the Olympic Festival. And Here's where it started. A double team. Branch and Reeves mess with each yeah, other. Look at that shot. And so the starters will enjoy the final moments of this. What a move by Reeves. And we'll set up and take note of the Hawkeyes for dismantling the Jayhawks today. Tom Davis working his way down the Hawkeye Bay. So the team fouls, even up at one apiece, is Tom Davis on the eve of his 49th birthday. Applauds the effort of his basketball team. Everything Tom Davis is asking. Well, right there the alley -oop. Excellent pass from Horton. Well read by the Iowa team. With the intercept is Reeves. Line pass to Marble. Marble has all that distributes the ball. He is not a point guard to shoot it. He's had three opportunities, two of them off balance. Horton on the spin. The Hawkeye, he has hit two in a row. So after being shut out for the first five minutes, Bill Jones comes back and now Marble comes back and the pressure. He has been tied up twice at 12 and at 14. Lorenzen's hit three in a row. This time a three-point goal. And I'll tell you, I'm really James, as you see, playing with a heavily wrapped right thigh. James for three, and the Bulldogs are on the board as Walter James, who had 20... Frederick trying to flip it over to Roar. Stuckey, the freshman, bangs it home. A three-point goal by Curtis Stuckey. He has hit two in a row from... James just inside the three-point barrier. Crowd thought Frederick was guilty of an offensive foul. He puts it in for Fred. Hawkeyes have really cooled down here in the second half. Just three of 12. Steal by Armstrong and the pass intended for Stuckey. Here's Jones. 
What a marvelous job by Armstrong. Sideline looking for that three shot or three point shot opportunity as Armstrong looked right. Hill wide open. Jones. Lorenzo. And the Good defense by Drake. Hill. And Kid Hill shot that left handed. But saving it is Stucky. Martin to James. And Walter James hit. James. And Walter James let Martin connect. Martin with eight. We are down to the final minute. Mo. Star comes up with a rebound for Navy. This is a very young team for Navy, only one senior on the squad. Marble coming up with a steal. Jones pulls up, and the Hawkeyes lead. Jones up, another rebound, and thus far they have totally dominated the boards. Great pass to Horton. Do you believe that feed? What a look there by the first point, but yet without their first basket is the ball game now five and it's old. The Hawkeyes are running. Armstrong in the middle on the feed from Mo. That's your perfect break. 13 and one record. So Navy has two points on the board, but not yet a field goal. Jones on the fast break for the Hawkeyes. The rebound again, Navy's not even coming close. Not running their offensive quarter court game at all. Just coming down during some one-on-one -on -one basketball. And out of seven to the free throw line. Well, you know leadership, that's one of the qualities you have to have to get into the Naval Academy. Ah! Hill with a battle. What a job by Kent Hill. He's made a couple of spectacular plays at both ends of the floor in his junior year of his first team All-State in his senior year. Armstrong for three. College basketball debut. Morning star can't buy the turnaround. And Hill outlets on the rebound to Armstrong. Nice pass. Iowa really dominating the boards. Jones, a blind pass to Mo. He looks one way, he throws the other, and the Hawkeyes have. Shalk is long, and the rebound grabbed by the Hawkeyes. 32 points, the biggest Iowa margin thus far. Mo for three. Yes. Oh. Bill Jones shoots it. And of course, all the grades they talk about are like 1,200 on the SAT and 28 on the ACT. And I said, well, the off guard. Jewel. Michael Morgan also in. Jepson. And that is the first basket of the season for the 7 1 North Dakota product. Jewel from outside. I didn't Whoa. know he had that kind of range, did you? Yes. Excellent shooter. He has just not taken that. Strong will start things off in the offense for the Hawkeyes. The alley oop to Marble. And that's the same play the Hawkeyes started with last year. Big basketball, man to man pressure defense. Nice pass, Mo to Marble. Second bucket for. Tom Davis talking to Al Lorenzen, who is just off to his right, about to trigger in. And they're really playing without their point guard. Inside Lorenzen. Lorenzen, a good move in Prada territory. The hoop will count, and Lorenzen has a chance. The statement that just surprised me about Anderson, the freshman from North Dakota, is the fact Coach Mulligan called him the best. 22. I know the Anteaters does. And do Hawkeyes? Jones on the pass from Horton. The interior passing has been very effective against the Chile opportunity. Really looked like a foul on B.J. Armstrong and nothing called. Armstrong in deep. And so the Hawk inside the three-point line, a two-point shot for Herdman. Whoa. What a play, Marble. First bucket for Ed Johansson. He's averaging 8.3. He's from the Omaha area. And Mo from three. Getting the pick from Johansson. Jones all alone. Watch this one. And that's 14 for 16. Then for Iowa. Both coaches really shuffling their benches. Interception by Armstrong. Look like a defensive back. Go for three. He's got two of them. Horton. Armstrong drives. Oh, what a move. They get three shots off. Unless they throw it to a Hawkeye. Armstrong 
Jones at the horn. Fourteen first half points for Bill Jones as he sends the Hawkeyes to the locker room with a 16 point lead. And that's the end of the first half. We'll return. At Nine forty to play first half. Marble for his thousandth point. Got it right there. He becomes the twenty. McMillan. Double zero is Cook. There's McMillan for three. Ooh. Bang. Greg McMillan was the object of quite about concentrating on the ball. That's just what happened there. So more than a turnover a minute. Total of twenty three. As B.J. Armstrong hits a three. And for Armstrong, he is now in defensive pressure. Elliott. And Jones goes high to pull down the rebound. Marble in deep. Roy Marble, nice move, 10 points. And McMillan races ahead. Looks for help. This is Kerr for three. And an outstanding shooter is Steve Kerr. And he will put the Wildcats into the lead at the half by banging it home from three-point range. So Arizona takes a one-point lead as the teams leave the floor. That's the end of the first half. We'll return after these local messages. First of all, they'll tell you both teams have been tight. This ball game has not lacked for intensity, but it certainly has lacked for the been apparent in the first half. Horton plays with Luke Fowler, and that sometimes ignites momentum. Perfect execution, Marble on the jam. Trying to get Arizona in a transition game. Cook fires to Elliott, and he answers with a stuff. And lacks sometimes for quality of play and for a quick tempo, but now that begins to pick up. Inside, it's Horton. Strong move to the basket by Ed Horton for his fifth point. And inbounding will be Kerr. Colbert has it deflected by Hill. Nice defensive play by Hill. Here's Armstrong. And Iowa's back to within one. And Arizona's done a good job of being patient in their offense. Another three-point try by Kerr, and he now has four. Here comes Armstrong for three. And Cook pulls down the rebound, but Iowa gets it back. Lorenzen will try. First basket of the game for Lorenzen. Lute Olson, a victory here would really be something that he would want to put on his record because this is a very emotional game for Lute Olson. Iowa down three points, one minute left to go in the game. This is when detail of a basketball coach's practices come into play. Fair to block out. And it has to be three-point shot opportunities now. Marble for three. Guys, and then their interstate rival, Iowa State, next Saturday. Bushler all alone. It's not been done very much, and that is winning in Carver Hawkeye Arena. Since this facility was built, Iowa has a record here of 58 and 16. And they have lost only two games here in the short tenure of Tom Davis. But they are about to go down to coming in and winning at one of the tough places in the country to win as Lute Olson and Tom Davis exchange handshakes, two very successful coaches, both former coaches of the year. Final score is Arizona 66 and Iowa 59. We'll be back with a final comment after this on the Hawkeye Sports Network. America. Roy Swift on the misfire. He's had a tough season shooting thus far. Here's Jones, and Iowa takes a three to nothing lead. Back for help, or as a man penetrates. Of course, LaFesta Rhodes having the great game. Nice execution, Marble open underneath. He'll have a chance at a three point. Able to stop it is foul people. Lorenzen finds Jones. Nice play off the baseline underneath. Second basket. Well, Tom Davis and the coaching staff told us today, Larry, that it was important to play this game just a day after that. Iowa State lost, difficult for them, and they will have the show again next week, providing the weather cooperates. Hill on the pass from Mo. Thus far, only three Hawkeyes have even, he struggled from the field, just 41% this year. I'll tell you, the entire Pan Am team has struggled, only 41 as a team. Lorenzen with the three, and for Al Lorenzen, who's at his second hoop, he's a junior college transfer, originally from Chicago, and went to Coffeyville, Kansas Junior College. Mo trying to get on track, and he does. Whoa. Two three points slapped out by Kevin Johnson, but no Bronx to get it, and so Horton runs it down. Hill. Great pass by Horton. 
a look away bounce pass. In fact, he did. It was an NBA carry. Reeves in deep for Marble. What a move. Jones does it off the glass. Reeves, here's Horton. Nice move. That was a gun. The Hawkeyes really playing with great intensity. Lorenzo going for three. He's hit two of them from long range. Throw, he has nine points. Already, Jones with 10, Marble with 10, and Lorenzo with nine, and Marble connects again. He's got a dozen. Made possible by Lorenzo with a 40 up. to 19 lead. Armstrong, and he hits a three, and for BJ, he tried to pat it. Lorenzo on a nice pass inside, and the interior passing has been a thing of beauty tonight. Horton, nice spin move. Lorenzo, offensive rebound. Horton on the tip. Second basket for Ed Horton, big run. Jay Armstrong. So now only two starters are on the floor for Iowa as Horton makes a quick move to the lane. What a move by Ed Horton, and Iowa leads 10 to 1. Purdue on the attack. They try to clear the left side for Tony Jones. From the top of the circle, Troy Lewis bangs it home. Lewis and Alex played very well last year here in Iowa's victory. 14 points and nine rebounds. Great steal by Iowa in the 140 pounds, and he is just tough to move out of the middle. Behind the pick, Everett Stevens fires a three. There's the very dangerous Troy Lewis banging it home. Another three-point goal for Troy Lewis. He leads the Peaks. And Iowa's one-time seven-point lead. Now a single point as Hill jams it for the Hawkeyes. State from the perimeter. Iowa's going to make him shoot from outside now as Mitchell fires and answers the challenge with a two-point goal. The first basket for Todd Mitchell. Iowa down in a hurry. B.J. It'll count, and he will go to the line. Is he quit to join Iowa primarily because of George Ravling? Hawkeyes by three as Marble connects. Roy Marble in the lane, nice. Iowa has used both. Here is the steal by Troy Lewis. Lewis has a breakaway with Reeves trying to deny. Seven experience, they are talented veterans. The three-point try by Troy Lewis. Second three-point, I'm roaring back after this low start. Stevens for three. Rebound underneath, McCants will try. He'll get it, and he will go to the line. McCants with his eighth point. He is... Armstrong has a notion, lets her fly for three. B.J. Armstrong has tallied nine points. That's his first three-point goal. And a pull getting baskets. Too often they've given up big baskets. They're trying to turn that around now. The three by Jones. That is what Iowa needed to go to the locker room. So many times it's happened the other way, but now Bill Jones with a key three, and the Hawkeyes go. Lorenzen passes to Horton. Lorenzen, offensive rebound and a bucket for Al Lorenzen. Come on, Melvin. Purdue back to that three-guard offense as the ball is knocked out and stolen by Hill. Armstrong comes up with it. Baseline, B.J. got it. What a great hesitation move. Just a point, 446 to go. Big steal. And banking it in, B.J. B.J. a steal in a hoop. Armstrong bounce. Purdue in a hurry. And the jam misses by Mitchell. Here comes Iowa back. Reeves gets it. Does not get it to go down. Iowa will take one more three. Marble will try it. And the ball game is over. They get two at the buzzer by Horton. Can you believe missing the dunk? Just lay it off the glass. Let your team win. Horton gets two, but Iowa needed a three, and Purdue hangs on on their home floor to win by one to go to 3-0 in the Big Ten.